Nestled in the heart of America is the small, tranquil town of Villisca, Iowa. A place that times seemed to have gently passed by, where the simplicity of rural life was embraced and cherished. In the early 1900s, its quaint homes, friendly townsfolk, and peaceful surroundings bellied the dark shadow that was about to descend upon it. Among its peaceful lanes and verdant fields, the Moore family built their life. Josiah Moore, a well-respected businessman, and his wife, Sarah, a social pillar of the community, were fixtures in Velisca's day-to-day rhythm. Their four children, Herman, Mary, Arthur, and Paul, were a testament to the family's love and unity, symbols of the wholesome life that Velisca offered. June 9, 1912, started just like any other day in Velisca. The sun stretched its rays over the rooftops, bathing the quiet town in warm golden light. The Moore family, like their neighbors, went about their usual routine, completely unaware of the horrific ordeal that was to unfold within a matter of hours. The day trudged along, marked by the usual small town activities. The Moore family attended church, and Velisca hummed with its typical serene rhythm. But as the sun set that evening, a horrifying plot was being woven into the tapestry of Velisca's history. A dark cloud was about to envelop this peaceful town, shattering its tranquility with a crime so heinous it would reverberate through the ages. That night, Velisca, a town that symbolized the idyllic nature of rural America, became the backdrop of a horrifying tragedy. This unsuspected horror would forever tarnish the town's image, turning it into the center of a haunting, unsolved mystery that continues to echo in the hallways of time. If you're drawn to stories that delve into the inexplicable corners of our world, and you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it. This ensures you won't miss any future journeys we take together into the chilling, the captivating, and the outright inexplicable. Now, let's venture forth into the shadowy past of Velisca. In the heart of America, nestled within the undulating landscapes of Iowa, the town of Villisca exhaled the tranquil energy of rural life. June 9, 1912, was a typical Sunday evening with an air of comfortable predictability. The ambience was serene, accompanied by the lullaby of crickets and punctuated with occasional bird calls as the sun began its retreat. This was an evening that embraced Villisca in a warm, summery glow, an evening that promised nothing more than the simple, everyday joys of life. In the midst of this pastoral serenity, the Moore family, respected and integral members of the community, were relishing their Sunday. The head of the family, Joe Moore, was a man of significant standing, owing to his prosperous farm implement business. He was a hard-working, dedicated individual, universally admired for his business acumen and community spirit. His wife, Sarah, was the loving soul of the Moore household. Known for her kindness and homely demeanor, Sarah wore many hats, juggling the roles of mother, wife, friend, and an active member of the church. Their four children, Herman, Mary Catherine, Arthur, and Paul, were lively, well-mannered kids, each unique yet harmoniously blending into the family fabric. The day was made even more special with the presence of their two young guests. Lena and Ina Stillinger. Close friends of the Moore children, their laughter and youthful energy added an extra layer of liveliness to the household. As the day turned to dusk, the Moore family and the Stillinger sisters attended their usual church service. This weekly ritual was an important part of their lives, a moment of communion, reflection, and fellowship. Sarah, having diligently coordinated the children's day program, watched proudly as the children performed, their faces beaming with excitement. Post the church service, they ambled back home, 
their path lit by the soft, radiant glow of the moon and the stars above. As they strolled, their voices punctuated the evening air, echoes of their laughter and chit-chat, a testament to their contentment and anticipation of another new week. Back home, a modest supper awaited them, followed by the comforting routine of getting ready for bed. By 10 o'clock, the lights in the Moore resident were extinguished, each room immersed in the quiet darkness of the night. The only sound that broke the silence were the tranquil, nocturnal symphony of distant owl hoots and the gentle rustle of the wind. As each member of the family, along with Lena and Ina, tucked into their beds, they bade each other good night, oblivious to the sinister shadow that lurked in their midst. Their minds were unclouded by the slightest suspicion that this ordinary night would morph into a gruesome morning, the tranquility giving way to a blood-curdling nightmare that would shock them and the entire town of Velisca to its very core. June 10th, 1912 dawned like any other day over the small town of Velisca, but an eerie stillness hung in the air around the Moore House. By this hour, the familiar sounds of bustling family life typically resonated from within, but on this particular morning, an unsettling quiet was the only greeting. The Moore's neighbor, Mary Peckham, was the first to sense something amiss. Accustomed to the early morning sounds of chores and laughter from next door, the silence puzzled her. She attempted to rouse the household, knocking on the door and calling out, but the response was a continued silence. An uneasy sensation tingled down her spine, leading her to call Joe's brother, Ross Moore. Ross, upon arrival, tried the locked door and peered into the windows, but the silent house revealed nothing of its grim secret. Utilizing his own set of keys, he unlocked the door and stepped into the darkened parlor. A few moments later, the veil of normalcy shattered. What met his eyes was a sight so horrific that it turned his blood cold. In the guest room, the lifeless bodies of Lena and Ina Stillinger were discovered, their peaceful sleep replaced by the grotesque mask of death. Ross, trembling, backed out of the house, a sense of fear and urgency gripping him. The peaceful morning had taken a horrendous turn, the town's tranquility pierced by an unimaginable atrocity. News of the grim discovery spread through Velisca like wildfire. A wave of shock, horror, and panic washed over the community as they gathered outside the Moore's residence. The tight-knit community, unaccustomed to such ghastly events, stood paralyzed their faces etched with disbelief and terror. City Marshal Hank Horton was the next to venture into the ominous house, the gravity of the situation compelling him to brace himself for the worst. Room by room, he uncovered the horrifying reality. All members of the Moore family, along with the Stillinger sisters, had met with a similar fate. Each room held a testament to a night of terror the air thick with a dreadful silence, broken only by the marshal's muted footsteps. The crime scene was chillingly gruesome. Every victim had been brutally bludgeoned, their heads covered with the Moore's bed linens, as if to hide the horrific sight of the deeds done unto them. The bodies lay in their beds, positioned in a manner suggesting they were taken by surprise in their sleep. An ax resting against the wall of the parents' bedroom a ghastly reminder of the brutal violence that had taken place. The mirrors in the house were covered, adding an element of ritualistic eeriness to the already grim scene. The scene revealed to the law enforcement was not just a crime scene. It was a tableau of pure horror, a stark contrast to the peaceful, loving home the Moore House had been less than a day ago. The tranquil town of Felisca had been catapulted into a chilling nightmare, its sense of safety brutally violated. As they processed the shock of this grotesque discovery, Felisca was left grappling with a terror it had never known before. The morning sun, which should have brought a new day of work, 
play, and community. Instead, reveal the day of death, fear, and uncertainty. The gruesome reality of the Moore families and the Stillinger sisters' fate had brutally punctuated the town's innocence, marking the dawn of a long, haunting mystery that would forever cast a shadow over Velisca. On June 10, 1912, the small town of Villisca, Iowa, transformed into an unlikely epicenter of professional crime investigation. The day before, it had been a modest, peaceful community, and now it was besieged by horror and the dire need for answers. A cohort of professional investigators, summoned from larger cities, descended on the crime scene. Their collective mission was to meticulously unravel the enigma of the Moore House, a sight that had become a grim tableau of imaginable brutality. The investigators were confronted with an eerie and perplexing scene. The murder weapon, an axe belonging to Josiah Moore himself, lay in the room where the young Stillinger sisters had been put to bed. It was as if the perpetrator wanted to leave a signature, a trace of his presence. Stranger still, every mirror and reflective surface within the house was covered with pieces of clothing, an unnerving detail that suggested an almost ritualistic aspect to the crime. It was evident that the victims were asleep at the time of the attack, leaving them utterly defenseless. In a bizarre, seemingly personal gesture, the murderer had taken the time to cover each victim's face with a sheet postpartum. This added an unexpected element of personal intimacy to the atrocity, deepening the chilling horror that permeated the house and extending its shadows into the investigation. The investigation, however, proved to be an uphill battle. Despite a promising list of suspects, concrete evidence was elusive. The list was as varied as it was unsettling. Andy Sawyer, a transient laborer, had an unnerving interest in the crime, but no solid evidence tied him to the scene. Reverend George Kelly, an eccentric traveling minister burdened with mental health issues, was noted for his odd obsession with the case, yet he too was devoid of a clear motive or opportunity. Then there was Frank Jones, a local businessman who had a well-known rivalry with Josiah Moore. Yet even he was no closer to being a definitive culprit, despite having motive and opportunity. As the investigators worked painstakingly through the gruesome scene and the list of potential culprits, a media storm was brewing. News of the shocking crime quickly spread, transcending the boundaries of the small town. Newspapers across the country latched onto the story, fueling a media frenzy that drew the nation's attention towards the unsuspecting town of Villisca. Reporters seemed to descend en masse, eager to put pen to paper, capturing every minute detail, every morsel of speculation, and turning Villisca into a nationally infamous name. Each new headline seemed to fan the flames of public interest and morbid fascination. Readers were captivated by the ghastly narrative unfolding in their morning papers their imaginations drawn towards the gruesome spectacle and its elusive perpetrator. The investigation, with its twists and turns and startling lack of resolution, became a story that was followed with batted breath by millions across the country. However, the absence of a clear resolution only amplified the gruesome mystery of the Velisca axe murders. They remained a haunting specter, a case that seemed to taunt investigators and the public alike with its lack of closure. As the years passed, the events of June 10, 1912, continued to cast a shadow over Villisca. The name of the town itself became synonymous with the unresolved crime, forever marked by the chilling sequence of events that transpired within the quiet confines of the Moore House. The legacy of the Villisca axe murders was to become a dreadful enigma, a nightmarish riddle etched into the annals of American crime history, never to be forgotten. As the investigation into the Velisca axe murders plowed through the years, 
various theories, some immediate and some developed over the subsequent century, have attempted to solve the baffling case. These theories, diverse in their suppositions, yet all laden with the weight of the chilling mystery, have given birth to a smorgasbord of speculation. The first theory involves Andrew Sawyer, a transient laborer who had taken an unusual interest in the case. Sawyer was known to have been in the area around the time of the murders. His possession of a similar axe, the gruesome murder weapon used in the crime, had thrown suspicion his way. Furthermore, he had a seeming fascination with the case and often spoke about it. However, despite this circumstantial evidence, Sawyer had a solid alibi for the night of the murders, verified by his employer, and the theory was consequently abandoned. The second major theory, often debated in hushed whispers in the community, was that of the local minister, Reverend George Kelly. Kelly, an eccentric figure known for his volatile mental health, had shown an unusual obsession with the crime. He had even confessed to the murders twice. His knowledge of certain details of the crime scene raised many eyebrows, but his confessions were ultimately considered unreliable due to his mental instability. Furthermore, he was acquitted after two trials, and this theory, too, ended in a cul-de-sac. Then there was the theory around Frank Jones, a well-known businessman who had a bitter business rivalry with Josiah Moore. The underlying motive in Jones's ability to hire a contract killer to settle the score had made this theory compelling. Yet, the lack of direct evidence leaking Jones to the crime or any definitive proof that a contract killer was involved left this theory hanging in the nebulous realm of speculation. Among the more modern theories, one involves a serial killer, speculated to have committed similar family annihilations across the United States. Some investigators have suggested a connection between the Velisca murders and other multiple victim axe murders in Colorado, Kansas, and Illinois. All these murders were committed using an axe, and in most cases, the victims were asleep, and mirrors were covered after the crime, much like the Velisca case. Despite the striking similarities, no concrete evidence has been able to definitively link these crimes, leaving this theory as tantalizing as it is unproven. Yet, another theory gaining traction in recent years is that of a group of unknown, itinerant murderers, possibly taking advantage of the turn-of-the-century societal changes. The mobility provided by the burgeoning railroad system and the social chaos of the times could have allowed these killers to roam undetected, perpetrating their heinous crimes before moving on. This theory, though plausible, lacks the critical underpinning of solid evidence to make a concrete case. Each theory, with its trove of details and speculation, promises an answer to the century-old question who killed the Moore family and the Stillinger girls. Yet, each one ultimately falters, hampered by insufficient evidence or inability to definitively tie the suspects to the crime scene. As a result, the Velisca Axe murders continue to defy resolution, their eerie shadows looming large over the annals of unsolved American crimes. The Velisca Axe murders, despite being over a century old, continue to reverberate in the town's collective memory, echoing in the silence of Velisca's quiet streets. The event has imprinted an indelible mark, not only on this quaint little town, but also beyond its boundaries, stoking the embers of fascination in true crime enthusiasts and the general public alike. The immediate aftermath of the brutal crime had shaken Velisca to its core. The idyllic small-town atmosphere, once a haven of safety and community, was shattered by the horrific events of that fateful June morning. The communal trust and openness typical of small-town living gave way to fear, suspicion, and unease. Doors that were previously left unlocked were now bolted tight. Shadows seemed to lurk around every corner and each stranger was eyed with suspicion. 
the tranquility of Velisca was forever marred by the blood-stained memory of the gruesome axe murders. The legacy of the Velisca axe murders transcends its traumatic impact on the town. The Moore House, the silent witness to the unspeakable horror, has been transformed into a grim attraction. Tourists from across the country and beyond are drawn to this historic crime scene hoping to catch a glimpse of the mystery that continues to shroud the century-old case. Over the years, there have been chilling reports of paranormal activity within the house. Visitors and paranormal investigators alike have reported eerie experiences, from disembodied voices and unexplained noises to sightings of apparitions believed to be the spirits of the murdered family and their young guests. Such stories, true or not, add an extra layer of intrigue to the unsolved case. They perpetuate the haunting presence of the crime, not merely as a morbid historical event, but as a living, breathing narrative that continually renews its impact on the collective imagination. Yet, amid all the theories, the investigations, and the chilling ghost stories, the core mystery remains unsolved. The question persists, an echo in the silence, who wielded the axe on that fateful night? As we reflect on the enduring enigma of the Velisca axe murders, we must grapple with this chilling question. It's a reminder that, at the heart of this century-old mystery, there is an unspeakable tragedy. Eight lives brutally cut short, their voices forever silenced. But perhaps, in the silence, if we listen closely, we might still hear the echoes of their untold stories waiting to be heard, waiting for justice. And that thought, perhaps, is the most chilling of all. As we draw to a close on this chilling journey into the past, I'd like to extend my heartfelt thanks to all of you for accompanying us through the haunting tale of the Velisca Axe Murders. We've journeyed through a century-old mystery ventured into the heart of a peaceful small town shaken to its core, and pondered upon theories that have only deepened the enigma. There's something about unsolved mysteries that beckon us, calling out to the detective within each one of us. So, I invite all of you to share your thoughts and theories on this enduring mystery in the comments below. Do you think a particular suspect was overlooked? Or perhaps a theory not given its due consideration? Or maybe, you have your own theory, born from piecing together the fragments of this complex puzzle. Whatever your thoughts, I look forward to reading them. While the Velisca Axe murders remain unsolved, they remind us of our fascination with the past and our desire to seek answers, even when they elude us. They underscore our collective yearning to make sense of the inexplicable, to find order and chaos, and ultimately, to seek justice. If you enjoyed this journey into the past and would like to explore more such fascinating stories from history, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel. Your support helps us dive into more mysteries, unearthing forgotten tales, and shedding light on the dark corners of our shared history. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming journeys into the depths of the past. Till our next journey into the unknown, keep wondering, keep questioning, and most importantly, keep musing.